Good morning, and welcome to St. Julian of Falconeri Parish. We especially welcome all visitors to our parish and those joining us online. Today, Father Mike will lead us in the celebration of God's love for us on this fourth Sunday in Lent. You will find the readings on page 893 of the Journey Songs hymnal. Please take a moment to stand and welcome those who are around you. Together, let us sing our gathering song, Amazing Grace, number 680. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's rose. It's rose. Two Sundays a year we wear rose. Laudate Sunday in Lent. Easy to remember. Keep the L's. And what's the other one in Advent called? Gaudete. Let us remember the we do this because, you know, Italians who um, contrived all of this just can't stand being serious for more than a few weeks at a time. Let us remember the times when we've been joyful to the Lord and give thanks for the times we've been unaware of the joy that the Lord gives us in our salvation. We ask sorrow for our sin. Kiri. mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a most wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations soon to come 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus, says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a home in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion on the aspens of that land we hung up our hearts Captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. How 
could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens of Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so one may not boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to you, O Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. 
But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works might be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Happy Latare Sunday. And on our Lenten journey, we're well into it now. We seek conversion. But in that journey, we have our ups and downs, don't we? Our spiritual ups and downs. We might face challenges. We might face struggles. And today is a day to rejoice, even when we face the reality of those struggles. We rejoice because we're reminded that in the gospel that the resurrection is not far off. We're reminded where we are in this Lenten journey that the resurrection is close at hand. We're also reminded in our daily experiences that when we least expect it, we can receive experiences of God's mercy, his love, his compassion. And that's a reason for us to rejoice today. Our first reading speaks of the people of Israel. They were conquered. They were in exile for 70 years in a foreign land, foreign land far away from their home. Their temple was destroyed. They were under oppression and they felt distant from God. They were in exile physically, but they were also in a spiritual exile as well. And we can envision their sadness when we hear the words that we just had sung in our responsorial psalm. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and we wept. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? Through the gospel though, we know, and through our life experiences, we know that that sadness is not the end. There's hope, and that hope is in the cross that we celebrate today. I had an unexpected encounter with somebody in a spiritual exile this week. I also had an unexpected encounter with God's grace this week. As some of you may know, my full-time ministry is at Christ Cathedral. I work at the pastoral center, working with the deacons and those who are training to be deacons. I spend my days there. And what do I really do? I attend a lot of meetings, meeting after meeting after meeting. And I was in one of those meetings on the phone on Thursday when two of my colleagues kind of looked into my window in my office and they motioned me to come out and meet somebody. And I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone, I told them, like, give, me, give me a few minutes and uh, we eventually met. And it was a young lady. They had found her on campus. Uh, as they walked from the far end to our office, they encountered a young lady crying. And she was crying of all places, of all the beautiful places on campus, she was at the cemetery, probably fitting for where she was spiritually and emotionally that day. And um, I brought her into the office and we talked and um, discovered that she was, she was very much like the people in Babylon, in exile. And I won't give a lot of details, but she was separated from her family who lived in a foreign country. She felt separated from God. She had experienced trauma in her life that is a trauma that probably none of us will ever experience in our lives. And she couldn't find words to describe what she was going through as we tried to talk. All she could do was just cry. And that really touched all of our hearts. It really drove us into action. We had a compassion, a suffering with her. And we began to pray. And we left the office and we went to Christ Cathedral. And the immediate reaction is, wow, this is a grand place. But where did we go? We went to the cross, right in the middle of the cathedral, the beautiful crucifix. And in the sadness that we shared, we stopped and we prayed. And it was at that moment that we began to see things look a little brighter for her. She encountered some light. We actually carried on to Catholic Charities where there was a counselor available, a professional licensed counselor to speak with her. She encountered friendship in the staff who talked with her, who accompanied her, who gave her something to eat, who took her out for dinner, and who gave her a ride home that evening. She came in in darkness, but she encountered the light, the light of Christ, and she encountered it through our church. And there's a message in that for us, because we are the church. As we seek light, as we seek conversion, as we receive that, we're empowered to share that light with others. There's a mention of Nicodemus in the gospel today, and 
I believe is mentioned three times in John's gospel. This is the first mention of Nicodemus. And where does he meet Jesus? He meets him at night in the darkness. And there's a spiritual aspect to that. Nicodemus was a leader. He was a Pharisee. But there must have been some darkness in his life. And he was searching. He was trying to understand who Jesus was, the man that worked all these miracles. And he had this curiosity, but to hide, he went in secret to meet with Jesus. And of course, Jesus shared with him the secret to eternal life. Nicodemus didn't have an immediate conversion. We know that there was some conversion, but Jesus carried on towards his mission at Calvary. We didn't see Nicodemus go with him. But later we see Nicodemus defending Jesus when he's on trial. We see Nicodemus at the foot of the cross when Jesus dies. And when he's at the foot of the cross, he doesn't talk with Jesus eye to eye like he did in that dark of night. He's at the foot looking up at the cross. And he has a profound conversion experience. And what was promised by Jesus came true at that moment. Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Nicodemus converted by that cross, then cared for Jesus' body, preparing him for the tomb. And in that moment of sadness, there was also joy because he had this conversion. During the next three weeks of Lent, I invite you all to come in and look up at the cross. I had the opportunity by chance. I wasn't planning it yesterday. I came to pick something up, and I said, I better pay a little visit before I left. I went right there, right in the middle on the step, and just sat in silence and looked at the cross. I didn't have any words. It just opened up my heart. And it was a profound moment of peace to see what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. That's an opportunity that we all have. And when we do that, our belief grows. When we do that, the promise of eternal life becomes a reality in our life. And it's a life that begins today that we can begin to live with great joy. And in that process, when we respond to that invitation, we're going to be empowered. We're going to be empowered to continue on our journey of conversion personally, to lift up our cross, but we're also going to be empowered to ease the suffering of the ones who are among us that have crosses that are heavier than ours, those who are in spiritual exile. And that's what we're called to do. That last Thursday when I had that experience, I felt so good about being a member of this Catholic Church, to see the response of the, of the church to somebody in need. We responded to Christ who lives in that young lady's life in a very powerful way. And I think this Lent we have that opportunity as well. So that invitation is there for all of us. Let us learn to love the cross deeper, to wear its image, to carry our own cross daily while helping others to carry their crosses as well. Let us make the sign of the cross with greater reverence, with a prayerful reverence. Let us learn to love it. And when in that love, we'll find ourselves advancing on our journey to conversion and we'll help others advance on theirs. And in that, we find our joy. So happy Latare Sunday. God bless you. And let us all pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry, today's a special day. <laughs> we have our second scrutiny today. And will Josh and Landon, our elect, those who are to be baptized, please come forward with your godparents to the front step here. And you can kneel in front of the cross. Just the elect, the godparents, please stand behind. And let us all pray, oh, let us stand now, <laughs> sorry. Let us all pray for these elect whom God has called, that they may remain faithful to him 
and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. That trusting in the truth of Christ, these elect may find freedom of mind and heart and preserve it always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That preferring the folly of the cross to the wisdom of the world, they may glory in God alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That freed by the power of the Spirit, they may put all fear behind them and press forward with confidence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That transformed in the Spirit, they may seek those things that are holy and just. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That these elect, whom the church has confidently chosen, may successfully complete, complete their long preparation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Church, saved by Jesus, God's love for us, that we will never grow weary of expressing our belief in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle each day for the basic necessities of life, that governments will be responsive to their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the ministries and the ministers of St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, that their expressions of service and love will attract others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that God will bring them to himself for eternity. For all who are ill, that God's hand will heal them. And for everyone for whom we promise to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the Masses this Sunday, for the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, for the repose of the souls of Josefina de la Cruz, David Nolte, and for the health and well-being of Garen and Camila Laws and the Alvarez family. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, source of unfailing light, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, you have cast out the darkness of hatred and lies and poured forth the light of truth and love upon the whole human family. Hear our prayers for these are elect, whom you have called to be your adopted children. Enable them to pass from darkness to light and be delivered from the prince of darkness to live always as children of the light of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, by your own baptism, the heavens were opened and you received the Holy Spirit to empower you to proclaim the good news to the poor and to restore sight to the blind. Pour out the same Holy Spirit upon these, our elect, who long for your sacraments. Guide them along the paths of right faith, safe from error, doubt, and unbelief, so that with eyes unsealed, they may come to see you face to face and to live for you and to reign with you forever. Amen. Stand. Our dear friends, this faith community of St. Juliana now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and our lasting prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Go in peace, and may the Lord remain with you always. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Be seated.
altar table is ready now. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. Through the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that, freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and every saint, we praise you as without end we acclaim. beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the whole human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Holy Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest of loves, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before, he, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, you desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We For as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer to you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the whole human race. 
Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop, his brother and his brother bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we all stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall all sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. those not gathered with us today, we offer the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Six.
please join in singing our Ave Regina Celorum, found on the back inside cover of your hymnal. How do you put your faith into action? How would the neighbors know that you belong to both the Diocese of Orange and the Parish of St. Juliana? When the weather announcer tells me that it will rain tomorrow, I dress for rain and I carry an umbrella. That's belief in action. When I am told that a community I belong to has needs, I contribute to the common good of that community. That, too, is belief in action. Recently, you received a letter beginning the 2024 PSA campaign to support the ministries of the Diocese of Orange. And I encourage each of you to pray about your contribution to the needs of the diocese and the assessment of our parish, $121,000. Then, to renew your belief in the many ministries of the diocese. The Pastoral Service Appeal, or PSA as it's called, supports the pastoral services of the Diocese of Orange. These services are part of the good works of the diocese, the formation for ministers for service, various diocesan offices, Catholic charities, restorative justice, and detention ministry, faith formation, and programs of the sort. They are the true ministries of the diocese. These works are an extension of the person of Jesus Christ among us today, and I believe that, and so I support it. And so do many of you. I encourage all of you to regard this as a duty. Each year, every parish is assessed a certain goal set by a formula established by the diocese. Once more, the 2024 St. Juliana goal is the same as it was last year, $121,000. All money collected beyond that goal is returned to our parish in full to support our needs. Your belief in the good works of the diocese and the parish makes it easy to reach that goal and to go beyond it year by year. You've done it in the past, so please do it again. I am grateful to Mr. Curtis Wesslin, our development director, who assists us in collecting the PSA funds. Last year's assessment, once more, was $121,000, but we collected a bit more than $160,000. That was $40,000 returned to us. Now you might be asking, Father Mike, where did that money go? <laughs> ah, with guidance of our parish finance council, two funds which, which help the parish are now established so that the parish will have faith formation programs and liturgy well into the future. Led by the charism of St. Juliana, her gift to us, we established these designated funds of faith formation and liturgy. With, when the ordinary collection cannot pay for various services or goods, these funds are essential. The faith formation fund is very useful in subsidizing the parish faith formation salaries and various programming. The liturgy fund does likewise. When extra instruments or goods are needed, the fund comes to be helpful. 
The total of these two funds combined right now is $127,902. In addition to the PSA rebate, as it's called, we receive $26,000 to support our Catholic Grammar School. And the parish has a third fund, the building fund. You continue to support it week by week. While nothing is being built currently, the existing buildings require ongoing maintenance needs and various salaries for upkeep. $1,086,610 is in that fund. $1 million of that was from a will that was given to the parish and reported to you a few years ago. It's in a, it's in a designated endowment trust. $86,000 represents the monthly collection. Some of that fund is deposited differently, so the money can be used separately as needed. Lastly, and not under the jurisdiction of the Parish Finance Council, is the St. Vincent de Paul Ministry and its fund. In 2023, the income from that ministry was $67,000 from the parish, and a diocesan grant of $10,000. Both proudly and humbly, our ministry serves, on average, 138 families or individuals each week. You will be given a more detailed summary of the St. Vincent de Paul ministry in the near future. I've used the metaphor previously, and I'll use it again because it's worth repeating. St. Juliana Parish, you are like the little engine that could or the battery that simply does not run out. You just do it, and God bless you for doing it. You believe in our diocese and in our parish, and your actions show your belief. And I don't think I'm looking through rose-color vestments. While I have your attention, I encourage you to consider your regular support to our parish. Again, prayerfully reflect on your regular weekly contribution to St. Juliana Parish. I don't know what you think when the collection basket passes you by, and here's a fun fact. Fiscal year to date, e-giving, that's electronic giving, and giving in cash when the collection basket is before you, is almost of equal amount. As Colonel Klink said in Hogan's Heroes, very interesting, and I'm most thankful and grateful. Again, we are the little engine that could and in fact does, but I must share a concern. During the past few years, Sister Death has claimed a few of our major donors. Our staff and office hours have been reduced to trim expenses but I hope not services to you. We are, we are holding our own financially, thanks to each of you. The parish council made an important, and I think very complimentary observation at our last meeting. While the community has been reduced in number, as the cost of living rose, so did the collection and various gifts to our parish, which continue to hold us together. Our income right now is slightly below budget, and our, and our expenses are a little bit above budget. Both income and expenses are always monitored by the Parish Financial Council. Your contribution is your belief, and your support to our ministry is encouragement. In our charity, St. Juliana Parish, with the permission of the Finance Council, and budgeted annually, gives a gift of $20,000, which helps St. Anthony Claret Parish literally down the street in their distress. Further, a scholarship was given for attendance to the Eucharistic Congress to be held this July in Indianapolis. Thank you, and God bless you. Chug along, little engine. You are God's good and holy people. You are rich in mercy and always generous in love. Your belief 
in the ministry of St. Juliana is indeed encouraging. Together, as a community, we complete the good works of Jesus Christ and pass on our faith and our belief in Jesus to future generations who will come to St. Juliana Parish and the Diocese of Orange. God bless you and thank you. That was a little late in coming. Our Lenten retreat continues this Monday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in the parish center. Plan to arrive a bit early, before 7 o'clock, for hospitality. The program begins at 7 and ends at 8.30. The series is live streamed, but try to arrange carpools so that more folks can attend in person. Stations of the Cross are prayed on Mondays beginning at 6.15 p.m. here in the church. The fish fry continues on the Fridays of Lent. Deanery penance services this week will be held Wednesday, March 13th at St. Anthony Claret Parish in Anaheim, literally down the street, and Thursday, March 14th at St. Justin Martyr Parish. They all begin at 7 p.m. Next Saturday, here at St. Juliana, we will have two confessors. Confessions will begin at 3 o'clock, but must end at 4.30 before the Mass. There will be no confessions on March 23rd, Palm Sunday weekend, nor will there be any confessions on March 30th, Easter weekend. The Knights of Columbus are hosting a St. Patrick's Day dinner party, and tickets are being sold after Mass. After Mass, there's also coffee and donuts in the parish center. Let us stand and pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into the world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your divine majesty, and love you in all sincerity in our works. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our final hymn, In These Days of Lenten Journey, number 362, 362.